Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be talking about OpenShift architecture. So let's get into the learning. So everybody knows about the Kubernetes cluster. What is there in the Kubernetes cluster guys? You have master nodes and as well as you have something called as worker nodes. Okay, so where do we deploy our workload? Is it on the master node or worker nodes? It is on worker nodes, guys, right? So this is your Kubernetes cluster, right? We will not go into the detailing of it. So same, same, uh, same thing like this, guys. We have uh, in the OpenShift. You required nodes to deploy it loads to deploy the workload you require master node so same the same to same thing is available in the open ship cluster also you see this diagram guys right can you see you have a master node here and you have this worker nodes where pods are deployed you have mongodb pod or you have apache or tomcat or mysql whatever it is it is there but one thing you should uh, see here guys there is change something like that they are saying you can use only rhel or atomic this this is not available on the other uh, platforms right guys it is available on this one either you can deploy on the centos but it was supported a little bit earlier now you need to you deploy the rhel or atomic operating system what is this atomic operating system that is Red Hat Core Operating System, guys. RHCOS, Red Hat Core Operating System. Now, this Red Hat Core Operating System is an operating system which is used by the OpenShift. And interestingly, you cannot modify this. It is immutable. So whatever you deploy on the top of this one, it will be deployed on the Red Hat. This is one of the feature, guys. In the Kubernetes, which were some of some people were deploying the Kubernetes on the Linux, Red Hat Linux. Somebody is deploying on the CentOS. Somebody is deploying on the Ubuntu. So support was not there from the Red Hat operating, uh, as a, because these are the all open source team, right? And as a proper enterprise level support was not available with that uh, particular operating systems. But with this uh, with this particular Red Hat core operating system, and if you are deploying your application as a, on the OpenShift. Red Hat supports you use the support for okay to the enterprise level applications. So we have one uh, you can deploy your open ship nodes or master node on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system or it is called as another operating system called as it is called as atomic operating system, but nothing but RHCOS core operating system. So this is one of the major thing major change you can see from the uh, Kubernetes uh, Cluster environment and the open shift environment you will find these operating systems which are immutable So you cannot modify it. You cannot take a control of the operating system guys Kubernetes uh, open shift will manage it for you And you can deploy this all the you can deploy the parts on this node and you have a master nodes here but and yes you have these layers uh, similar like your kubernetes platform you you can deploy it on the physical virtual private public cloud you have a service layer to expose the application to the outside like the service which we have created we we have seen like uh, a load balancer service or node port service or cluster ip service this is also available inside this kubernetes uh, inside the openshift container platform but on the top of that they have come up with the one nice ingress controller stuff Additional uh, routing layer. So in the Kubernetes, you need to deploy the ingress controller separately, so that multiple, uh, so that um, uh, traffic can be diverted to the different applications. In OpenShift, this comes in built. Okay, you can use HA. They are using HA proxy, HA proxy as an ingress controller here. Right. So what happens with the help of there is a service layer. But on the top of that, you have an ingress controller, such as your uh, one routing layer, and this routing layer helps you to. Routing layer is very closely integrated with your DNS services, so that it will directly generate one link for you, and you can access the application directly. So just give the code. Developer will give the code. 
there are a lot of CI CD and automation tools are there. Okay, you can integrate that with these particular nodes. And finally, you will get the one nice link which you can give it to the customer. And additionally, you have persistent storage. So if you understood the Kubernetes, this is very easy to understand. But if you don't, if you if you are not aware about this one, guys, don't worry. This is not difficult to understand. So this is the this is the da data plane where your containers will be hosted, and this is the master node which will manage this worker. It is almost same to same architecture of available, but with routing layer is there, additional services are there, and these are the some of the CI CD pipeline can be integrated easily with this OpenShift platform. Okay, friends, and uh, let me just take you to the one more architecture which will help you to understand. Yes. So same thing, but little bit at higher side, you can say. Uh, look at this. You have this uh, infrastructure. You can deploy this open shift on your physical machines, virtual machines, private cloud. You have cloud native services also. Then on the top of that container runtime in, engine is running. It provides networking storage registry is one thing which is not available in the Kubernetes level. It has its own registry guys where we can it will store the images we can create a logs it, it also has a log and metrics and security features so you have container orchestration and cluster management on the top of that application lifecycle management is also done you have build automation deployment automation service catalog is there self services and on the top of that you can have a containers running so yes guys you have almost everything but integrated with a lot of other services too Okay, so what are the features of OpenShift? So yes, it does give you the high availability. It is a it is using a lightweight operating system called as RHEL Core OS. It provides you the load balancing. It does the automatic scaling for you. Logging and monitoring services are present. You it it is very easy to do the service discovery. You have a integrated storage boxes. Storages are available like all classes and everything application management and you can also do the cluster extensibility and along with that see here you have rh rh cos container engine is there on the top of that kubernetes there and on the top of that you have a cluster services such as over the air updates that is called as ott and you have monitoring registry networking routers routing mechanism everything is integrated as a cluster services here and on the top of that as a platform services or application services and developer services you can integrate that inside the red hat open platform such as service mesh that is for serverless builds right ci cd pipeline full stack logging okay for the application you have databases runtimes a lot of things are there guys you have also code ready workspaces you can use that um, space to develop your code inside the OpenShift container platform only, guys. You have IDs and everything is plugged in. Okay, and so that is why it's really, really beautiful. So it uses the container engine, sorry, Kubernetes engine, and on the top of that, it is deploying your containers along with the lot of management tools. So this is actually uh, internal architecture of the OpenShift guys. If you see, this is your uh, Kubernetes, right? I know that everybody now, most of you know about it, right? Kubernetes. It has master node, Kube API server is there, controller manager is there, scheduler is there, etcd, kubelet is there, and your container engine. And what is the other parameters they have added from the OpenShift? So they have taken it this Kubernetes as it is, but they have created their own API server. So Cube API server and the OpenShift API server talk to each other. And as well as we get a authentication OAuth is there some other authentication is also there. And similar like Cube controller manager, we have OpenShift controller manager too. And one more additional feature which is also available on the uh, your Kubernetes that is called as a core DNS. But here this little bit core DNS is quite interesting. Uh, it, it closely monitors the DNS features in the OpenShift because 
uh, it requires for the HA proxy ingress controller. So this is actually uh, you should uh, think about this architecture. This is important. So the way we deploy the uh, application in the Kubernetes by using the pod, same thing is there in the OpenShift. We deploy the application by using the deployment. Same thing is in the OpenShift, but there is one more thing that is called as a deployment config. Deployment is also there. Deployment config is also there. Additional object. So, guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if you could not understand anything or if you want to dive deeper in the topics discussed, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on OpenShift for beginners. And under this free class, you'll be learning about what is Red Hat OpenShift, why OpenShift skill is in demand, OpenShift architecture, its components, and what not. So let me just give you a walkthrough as how you can register for this free class. All you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash OpenShift02 and you'll be seeing this kind of interface. You just have to click on book your free seat now. Select an event date, enter your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. After that, you'll be seeing this kind of URL. So you just have to save that URL, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.